Well, hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another Cool Dude Clam uh, video. Okay, I'm not going to talk in a stupid voice for the rest of the video. But anyway, I want to show you something that you may or may not find interesting. I find it interesting. And that is, it's not the camera that's interesting, but what's on the SD card. Now, some of you may or may not know that I've used the SD card from this camera to do the live Linux installation. Now, what I thought would happen is when I put the Linux Mint Live ISO on there, I thought what would happen first is it would format the card and then put the live Linux on there. But if we just plug this camera into the computer so you can see the files on there. I'm trying to do this all in one shot so you know I'm not BSing you. I'll have to unplug something because I'm now very low on USB ports. I've only got three on this laptop. Hope you can see what I'm doing. I think that was the mouse that I just unplugged, which I'm not using at the moment. So, plug the camera in. And let's just turn that on. It's gone into USB mode. Now let's just take a little look at the files on here. Oh yeah, I unplugged the mouse and I'm wondering what's not working. So, open files. You can see we've got all the Linux installation files here. But, we also still have the files from the camera. So, if I go into, say, private, which is where the videos from this camera are, I think I'm covering up the microphone, aren't I? Um, so, trying to remember where they are. There's the stuff from the camera. So, it put all the Linux files on top of the stuff that's already there. And in fact, I've even used this card and um, recorded things after I installed Linux. So, this, is fi this SD card has files on it from before I put the live Linux ISO on there, and after I put the live Linux ISO on there, and it's all on there together. Now, this should even boot from the files that are on the camera. So let's do that right now. We gotta shut down. Because on my other computer I rebooted because I needed to reboot it for whatever reason. I think it's because I needed to switch to Windows XP for a while. You know, because I've got some stuff that only runs on Windows XP, and I've got some stuff that only runs on Windows 7. And when I rebooted the computer, it actually booted from the camera. So, let's do that on this one. So I'm going to go restart. And let's see if Linux Mint shows up. Because as far as the computer is concerned, the camera is a USB flash drive, so it should actually work. Have we got anything? Oh, yes, we do. Okay, that's a different menu to what I got on the other computer, but it's there. Okay, let's um, I'll select Start Linux Mint. Oh. Bloody Linux. Oh, I can't even type anything. And the keyboard's not working. Well, um, despite that, it is booting. So, I don't quite know what was happening there. Maybe I should have tried it on the laptop's keyboard rather than the keyboard that I've got plugged in. Now, I want to do a little experiment here. I want to see 
if it will respond to my touch screen, and I'm covering up the microphone again, I also want to see if I can scan an image. So, see, we got well, we got the Linux Mint logo there, but we don't seem to have anything else. It's kind of strange what we got on the laptop screen. Okay, we've got everything on the laptop screen. We just don't have. Um, all right. Let me just plug in my mouse. Um, I'll have to unplug the keyboard in order to do this, but find USB for the mouse. I mean, I don't even know the touchscreen might even be working, but if I can get to my display settings. Uh, yep, there's our mouse. If I can remember how to get to display settings on this, you've got to remember I'm I'm still pretty new to this, so I don't exactly know where everything is. Hope I'm holding the camera in the right place because I'm not looking through the, the viewfinder at the moment because I need to see what I'm actually seeing. If that makes any sense, I think what we've got here, I think it's doing it like a dual desktop and like a dual screen system. So I'm going to move my mouse over onto this screen and see if it... I'm going to keep moving the mouse and if it appears on this screen we'll know... Yeah, we do. We have a dual screen set up. That's why that's doing that. But... Right. I'm whacking the mouse all over the place here. So this one should be the touch screen, so let's make that the primary screen and see if we get response. Oh yes, everything is all switched over to here. We still got that on this screen, but we've got stuff on here now. Alright, we'll go to keep this configuration. Well, let's see, uh, you can barely see what's going on because it's so glary. Let me just reconfigure the lighting in here, maybe we'll see it better. Alright, well, let's see if this responds to the touch screen. I don't know what resolution we're on right now. It's... Sorry about all the glare, I'm trying to fix that. We'll just have to do it with the lights on, because that's the only way it's going to be able to focus. Right, well, let's see if we can... let's see if it responds to the touch screen. And it doesn't appear to be. Does it respond anywhere? Hello? Oh, no. It is responding to the touch screen. It's just not responding to it in the way that I was expecting it to, which is kind of strange. Okay, let's go back to the thing here. Let's turn the main screen off and let's see what happens. So now we've got nothing on the laptop screen and everything is on this screen, so I'm going to tap keep this configuration, see if it works that way, and... I think we're in business. I think that's fixed that little problem. Of course it would help if I was actually showing it in the camera. I'm going all like this without even realizing that the camera's not even seeing what I'm seeing. So, yep, we have a touch screen on Linux. And it is working the way I want it to. We're at 1920 by 1080. That's a little bit higher than I want it, but I usually have 1280 by 720, but that will do for now, just for this little experiment. Right, well. Let's see if we can scan something. Right, so I've got something on my scanner. Of course the camera cannot see it, but trust me, it is there. 
So, we're going to see if we can scan something from the scanner. So, I've got to my menu. Now, I think GIMP is pre-installed on here. So, the graphics, GIMP. Let's see if this can communicate with my scanner. Still warming up. Just gotta wait for it to make finish making its noises. And then we can use it. Well, I've been reading up on it, and apparently, in order to scan something, I need to go to File, Create, and there should be an option there that says Scan a Camera. And there's nothing. It's not there. So I'm guessing that's for an older version of GIMP and they've, since then they've changed it and I just cannot find how you do it. Well, screw GIMP then. See, I've closed it and there's still leaving stuff behind. So I'm going to try this at simple scan and see what that does. Um, let's see if this communicates with my scanner at all. Hopefully it will. I can hear some activity going on with my scanner. Ah, we are... we're getting something. So it does communicate with my scanner, and judging by the speed that that's scanning, I would say that's scanning at a very high resolution. Maybe 300 dpi, something like that, maybe even more. Right, let's save it, and see... I'm saving it as a PDF. I don't want it a PDF. I want it as something else. Yeah, so save it as a ping file. I'll have to plug in my mouse again. You see, this is what I was trying to do. Gimp, why did you have to make everything so complicated? I'm still going to use Gimp for like the touch-ups and colour correction and things like that, but yeah. So, in glorious Glarovision, we are two for two. So, that all seems to be good, so I'm going to shut this down now and edit this video. So, yeah. I'm shut down. And... Oh! Huh, got the camera. It's gone back into camera mode. Well, I guess that proves it. So, um, if you're seeing this bit, that means I have successfully edited this video on Linux. And just for last, look at my background. It's a Windows XP background with the Apple logo on it being displayed on Linux. I'm gonna edit this video now. Wow. Bloody Linux. Bloody Linux. Bloody Linux.